medical science advances more every day, and that's a good thing. Pharmaceutical companies are forever coming up with new ways of treating illnesses, but not all illnesses, injuries, and other medical issues can be treated with drugs. Sometimes, science and engineering also have a role to play in making people's lives better. The practice of prosthetics started with making artificial limbs, but now, various parts of the body, large and small, can be replaced with artificial alternatives. All the medical miracles you're about to see in this video are either about to happen or happening right now. Almost 300 million people around the world suffer from some sort of visual impairment. If it's a minor impairment, it might be treatable with glasses or laser surgery, but there's no known cure for blindness. Yet. That's all about to change, though. Bionic eyes have been a staple of science fiction for decades, most notably seen in Geordi LaForge and Star Trek. But a company called Second Sight is about to make artificial vision a reality. They've patented a device called the Argus 2, which is a powerful camera connected to a pair of glasses. The glasses work in harmony with an implant placed into the eye, which sends signals directly to the optic nerve and allows for vision where there was no vision before. Right now, they can only show the shadows and the outlines of figures, but the technology is developing. Another company in Melbourne are currently trying diamond electrode bionic eyes, capable of perceiving human facial expressions and reading large print. In 20 years or so, bionic eyes might be more powerful than the eyes we were born with. If you lose your tongue, you also effectively lose the power of speech. That's a particularly cruel blow for people who suffer from tongue cancer. Even if they beat the disease, they're left unable to communicate. A man named Shogo Minagi in Japan might be able to help with that. Minagi and his team have designed and built a movable tongue prosthetic which, with time and training, is capable of the full range of motion a real tongue enjoys. In the past, Prosthetic tongues have only existed as part of dentures and stay fixed in one position. The new prosthetic is connected by a wire to the back teeth and can be pushed up to touch the roof of the mouth by pushing down with what remains of a patient's original tongue. After conducting successful trials with patients who have used it to regain their speech, he now hopes it's ready to be made available to a wider audience outside his home country. Patients who suffer from serious leg injuries often spend months working hard to regain control and strength in their injured limb so they can regain full independence. That involves hard labor and a lot of pain. In the meantime, their quality of life is severely impacted. Altered G's bionic leg can improve that situation dramatically. The device looks bulky but weighs only 8 pounds, and once it's strapped to a user's leg, it operates so naturally that it feels like part of their own body. That's because it contains a pressure sensor in the foot which interprets the intention of the user when they put weight on it. So if it thinks you're trying to sit down or stand up, it will help them to do it. It can even scale how much assistance it provides, so as the wearer's strength increases, it can be programmed to help less and encourage them to take more weight on their own limb. It's barely a bionic leg at all. It's a piece of exoskeleton. A device which restores movement to one part of the body using robotics is impressive, but the ExoGT does far more than that. This is almost a whole body exoskeleton, and it's being used to help people who've suffered from a stroke or a severe spinal injury regain their mobility. Many devices of this type have been trialed before, with varying degrees of success, but the ExoGT is the first to gain formal approval from the FDA. It focuses on the hips and the knees, which are the two primary joints when it comes to full body movement. Right now, there are only 200 of them in use, but as awareness of them gathers pace, it's hoped they'll become an essential part of physiotherapy for anybody who needs them. Depending on the needs of the person wearing the exoskeleton, the device can bear anything between zero and 100% of a patient's body weight therefore effectively doing the walking for the wearer if it's set at its maximum level. If researchers at the University of Illinois get their way, 
bodybuilding might soon become a thing of the past. Because all of us will have instant access to hugely powerful muscles by paying for them. The research team has come up with a completely artificial muscle, and it's capable of lifting more than 12,000 times its own weight. The muscle even looks and feels a little like a real muscle. It's a twisted coil of carbon fiber placed inside silicone. The only thing that's stopping them from putting it inside human bodies right now is that it needs its own independent source of electricity. As only a small number of volts is needed to stimulate the coil and cause it to contract, it's hoped that an implanted generator might soon be able to solve that issue. Alternatively, they might be included as part and parcel of artificial limbs. In terms of lifting power and strength, it's capable of 18 times more than the average human muscle. One of the limitations of prosthetic limbs of old is that they could touch, but they couldn't feel. You might be able to pick up a glass of water with a bionic hand, but you can't feel the surface of the glass, or tell whether it's hot or cold. The University of Utah is now making full sensation in prosthetic limbs possible by using the Utah Slanted Electrode Array, which interfaces between a user's motor and sensory nerves, their minds, and the device. That means the device can be moved by thought alone, and it can feel what it's doing. Achieving this means implanting hundreds of electrodes on top of nerve fibers, which send specific sensory input to the brain. The game-changing array is now being used inside a new kind of prosthetic arm, which has been named Luke, as a nod to Luke Skywalker, who lost his hand in the Star Wars movies. It's being tested on one patient, who loves it, but isn't yet quite as sensitive as a real human hand. Given time, though, it will get there. All of the devices we've looked at so far act as ways to replace something that's been lost. Our next one could enhance something that's already there. It's the work of Princeton University this time, and they've created an artificial ear, which is capable of hearing frequencies that humans cannot, and even tuning into the radio. Not only that, but they've done it by fusing together tissue cells and an antenna using 3D printing technology, which means one day in the future, people might be able to make the ear themselves at home. The Princeton ear is a coiled antenna contained within 3D printed cartilage. Two tiny wires in the ear would require surgically connecting to the wearer's nerve endings, and then the device would become operable. That means enhanced hearing for people who don't have any hearing difficulties, or brand new hearing for people who have either gone deaf or been born deaf. It's still at the testing stage and isn't ready for human trials just yet. The need for bionic bones isn't as clear as it is for bionic limbs. We all have bones, and if you lose a limb, then you get an artificial one. Where would bionic bones become useful? The answer is in people who have weakened or badly broken bones, and especially those with arthritis. As arthritis progresses, it can lead to damaged cartilage around a bone and fractures that will never heal, therefore causing constant pain. A bone made from titanium alloy won't suffer from any of those problems and is, therefore, a workable solution for patients whose only other realistic alternative is amputation of the affected limb. In British arthritis sufferer Julie Martin, a special implant with articulation at the elbow joint has been connected to her shoulder socket and replaced the badly damaged bone that was there previously. She was previously in so much pain she couldn't dress herself. Now, she's independent and free of pain once more. Suffering damage to a lung because of cancer or injury is a serious and life-threatening and limiting situation. And in the past, there hasn't been much that doctors have been able to do about it when human lung donors aren't available. Now there's hope for people who suffer from chronic lung conditions. Lung transplants from elsewhere may be on their way. Scientists at the University of Texas Medical Branch have successfully performed a lung transplant on a pig, and it's shown no signs of rejecting the new organ. Before the transplant, the new lung was bioengineered by surrounding it with cells from the pig due to receive the transplant, which reduced the chances of rejection. 
The donor lung was placed in a bioreactor for 30 days to allow time for the new tissue to grow around it and supplied with stem cells. If this could be made to work in humans, it would be possible to create lungs for any person of any size on demand. The doctors behind the research expect to see the first artificial lung implanted into a human within the next decade. One of the problems that faces doctors and researchers when trialing new medicines is that they have little to no way of knowing how a patient might react to their proposed treatment. That's why clinical trials take forever, and animal testing is still sadly necessary. The solution to that problem may be yet another unintended benefit of 3D printing. Researchers from Harvard have proven that they can now 3D print synthetic organ tissue that mimics human cell behavior. And they can do it so accurately that they can even print cells from the human heart onto a computer chip. In theory, these cells could be used for drug screening research, making animal testing a thing of the past, and making the impact of new drugs on humans far more predictable. Taking it further, cell structures could be grown using cells from a patient's own body, and therefore, the risk of adverse reactions could be completely eliminated. That makes clinical testing far faster, and would, therefore, make new treatments available almost as soon as they'd been invented. Sticking with the benefits of 3D printing and science working hand in hand, there's a man walking around in the United States of America who owes his quality of life to the new technology. Luke Masala was born with spina bifida, which left a gap in his spine. At the age of 10, he could barely walk, and then things became even worse when a bladder abnormality caused his kidneys to fail. His prognosis was grim, but he grew up to be a wrestling coach. That's because pioneering surgeon Anthony Atala of the Boston Children's Hospital was able to cut out a tiny piece of his defective bladder and grew a brand new one for him within his lab within two months. Atala is a world leader in his field, and his technique involves using a 3D inkjet machine to create biological tissue, a process known as bioprinting. Bladders are just one organ he's capable of producing. He can also make urethras, cartilage, and skin. Atala believes that bioprinters are capable of precision that's impossible for human hands and will be the next major step in medicine. Of all the various parts of the human body that can break and need repairing, the spine is the most problematic. If someone breaks their spine badly, the chances of them ever walking again are slim to none. Because so many nerves travel up and down the spine, the idea of completely replacing the spine is so complicated that you might imagine that it's beyond the realms of human possibility. And yet, it might not be. If a medical research team in Melbourne, Australia is to be believed, a broken spine can be overcome by a pioneering new device. Their pioneering Strenrode device is so small that it could be threaded into a blood vessel one millimeter wide and yet it's advanced enough to act as an interface between the brain and an exoskeleton. If it works as the team hopes it will, it can interpret commands from the brain to move the exoskeleton as if it were the wearer's own body, and thereby provide them with the ability to walk. Best of all, it can be implanted as if it were a stent, removing the need for dangerous open brain surgery. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!